as we go to Tennessee, I'm really torn as, uh, you know, I'm just really interested. I think this pick is going to tell a lot about what direction the Titans want to go. I don't think Ryan Tannehill is long for Tennessee. I think that that experiment is coming to an end. I think he probably has one, maybe two years left at most. They're not going to take a quarterback here, obviously, but you know, do they go get a weapon for him in a Jackson Smith and Jigba to try to really extend this window and open it back up in an AFC South that's, you know, pretty wide open from a, a division championship standpoint? Or do they go get an offensive lineman to be the anchor for whoever's next and just kind of start to build towards that next guy? I think that the Titans want to compete. And that's what's going to drive this next pick to kind of, I I had an offensive lineman penciled in here originally, but as they're kind of dropping off the board, we'd have to dip down a little bit to Broderick Jones. I don't know that that's the best value here at 11. So I'm going to have the Tennessee Titans taking the first offensive skill position of this draft and taking Jackson Smith and Jigba to kind of supplement their receiving core that all of a sudden is struggling a bit and looks like a little bit of a vulnerable kind of stinks. spot for them. Yeah. It, yeah. It, just watch what they did last year um, on the field. It's not good. Traylon Burks, he could definitely break out this year, and I think he will have a much better season this year in his second year. But aside from that, it's a whole lot of no-name guys in that receiving yeah. court. Yeah, it, that right now the Eagles buying – uh, runaway margin won that trade last year. Absolutely. Traylon Burks had a rough, rough rookie season. The Titans had a rough season last year. It's a, it's a team that was built to win now, but that that team is aging, right? And yep. so, I to me, it feels like you got to go make something happen in the next year or two. Otherwise, everybody's going to fall off a cliff. Who knows what you have with Malik Willis? Is he actually the franchise quarterback? Last year didn't look like it. Last year he struggled mightily. So. I like the pick, uh, you know, interior offensive line. Broderick Jones, I think, would be a great pick there as well. Uh, so now that falls to the Houston Texans, and I've got the Texans and then the Jets at 13. For me, uh, the Texans are going to be focusing with Jackson Smith and Jigba off the board. I think that's probably the pick at 12 if he's there. Now I think you're looking in the trenches. Defensive line, there's not a guy that I would take here unless you're maybe going to take an edge rusher like Nolan Smith or Lucas Van Ness, and both of those guys are certainly in consideration. But because the Titans did not take him, I'm going to take Broderick Jones, offensive lineman out of Georgia here, can play tackle, did play tackle at Georgia, can also slide into guard, and I think he could be really nasty inside as a guard. Um, Texans got a new quarterback. I know they would love to get that new quarterback in C.J. Stroud, some, some weapon help. They just traded away Brandon Cooks. But I think you can find weapons later on in the draft, maybe in their second round pick. I think let's go ahead and take a top 15 offensive lineman here in Broderick Jones. Uh, With the... Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I think that's a great pick. I think that's a huge need for the Texans. And yeah, it's going to be interesting to see as those two AFC South teams kind of debate back and forth which philosophy to go with who wins out in that matchup. Yeah, so Jones is the third-ranked offensive tackle on my board and is a top 15 pick. Now, you've got the Jets on the board. They need offensive line help, specifically at tackle. They need defensive backs. They need linebackers. For me, it's too early to take a linebacker. I think if you went to go take an offensive lineman now, you'd be reaching because yep. J- uh, Darnell Wright is probably the next best tackle, but you could get him in the mid-20s. So, I think either the Jets are looking to trade back here or they may just go ahead and and take the best defensive back available, which for me is Joey Porter Jr. Now, I know a lot of folks have Brian Branch potentially going here. The more that he's been evaluated post, uh, post combine, post pro day, you're seeing a lot of teams move him out to corner. And so if you're going to move him away from that safety spot where the Jets really have a little bit of a void. I wonder if there is some jigsaw puzzle pieces that can go. You take, you took a mod uh, Gardner sauce Gardner last year. Let's add another really, really solid cornerback in Joey Porter jr. Here at number 13. I love the pick. I was interested where you were going to go at defensive back there. I figured that's where you're probably going. And now 
that kind of puts division rival New England on the clock in an interesting position. New England really needs some help with a good cover corner. I think they could go edge here as well. Same kind of problem with taking a tackle. You don't want to reach down too far. Mm-hmm. And we also know Bill Belichick could just pick some random no name with this pick. But Very true. Uh, for our mock draft purposes, I'm going to take the best of playable player. I still have him on my board. It just so happens to be another cornerback. And it's going to be Devon Witherspoon out of Illinois. Um, a guy sure. that's kind of a late bloomer, was a zero-star recruit coming out of high school, but just really blossomed into an awesome, uh, awesome player out of uh, Illinois. Just look at the production. He's he's had a great uh, career there at Illinois. Uh, 52 tackles his junior year. Um, not a huge ball hawk. He did have three interceptions this year as a senior, and I think that really helped ease a lot of concerns. But, yeah, I think – Witherspoon would be great for that system in New England and be a really great pick here. He's very physical. Um, I think he's going to get in trouble a little bit as a rookie because he yeah. plays so physical at the line and a lot of hand fighting down the field, which I'm sure he's going to going to get called for from time to time. But uh, love the player for a long time was battling for that cornerback one slot on my board. I think the Patriots are really happy there. Green Bay is going to pull the most ironic move in their history, and they are going to take a wide receiver as soon as Aaron Rodgers is out the door. Now, (laughs) in the past, I've mocked the Jets giving up 13 to the Packers for Aaron Rodgers. The problem with that is it seems like first-round picks are out of the discussion, maybe a future one, but because the Jets don't know if Aaron Rodgers is going to play next year, if this is just a one-off try and win now, that's what's halted the proceedings, at least as of recording this on the afternoon of, of April 16th, there's not a deal. Now you have Packer players going on Barstool and saying, oh yeah, he's a Jet. Don't, you know, that, that deal is coming, but we don't know what the terms of that will be. So I'm more likely to say that's going to be a second rounder this year and maybe some sort of future capital, but not 13. But I do, uh, and I'm realizing I'm stealing your pick here. I, I, think, I was going to let you roll with it, but you know. Well, I, I'm realizing you're <laughs> blue, I'm red. I think the Packers are going to take a wide receiver, but uh, my apologies. Turn it back over to you. That's okay. Um, you know, I, I think a wide receiver would be a really good pick here, and yet yeah, would be extremely ironic. They also have a huge need at tight end, though. And yes, I, I do. I, I'm going back and forth on if 15 is too early to take a tight end. You, you go down the board, I think Quentin Johnson is probably the best available receiver. Quentin Johnson, Jordan Addison, one of those two, whoever your yeah. favorite is. Both of those guys have some red flags for production to me. So yeah. I'm actually going to slide down the board here and take a tight end. I'm going to take the first tight end off the board in Notre Dame's Michael Mayer. And I think this might seem to reach just a little bit It might be a little too far of a reach, but this is a huge, huge need for the Packers, and it has been for a really long time. As they look to get Jordan Love acclimated, I think Christian Watson and Romeo Dobbs can turn into a pretty solid one-two for Green Bay, but Michael Mayer could solve a lot of problems in the underneath game and give Jordan Love a lot of other options. Well, I just apologize for stepping on your toes. I was going to go with... I was going to go with Jordan Addison. So we do give the Packers a, a pass catcher there. Um, and boy, I, you know, if you're Aaron Rodgers, like how can you not throw something against the wall, right? Like <laughs> zero support, zero support. Uh, when you were quarterback one, that was all you needed. That was all you asked for was just someone who could reliably catch passes after Randall Cobb kind of exited his prime after Jordy Nelson left. And, and the front office refused to do it. Um, so I, I do think that's funny. I also think you've just made a lot of enemies out in the West Coast. The Chargers wanted Michael Mayer. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, apologies to the Chargers it's, fans there. It's going to be fascinating to see where these first round tight ends go. I think we could get as many as three tight ends taken in the first round. And it's going to be fascinating sure. to see just who starts that. It could be a run on them once one team uh, gets that going. Yeah. Well, so Washington is on the uh, on the clock now. Quarterback, interior offensive line, and linebacker are all options. Quarterback, it's way too early, I think, to take Hinden Hooker, who's still rehabbing from an ACL tear. You know, in a dream world, Will Levis falls to 16, and they get to take him. In this mock, though, the Colts panicked and took him at four. Uh, interior offensive line, like I mentioned, probably the best guy on the board is Darnell Wright. You could 
take him here, but he's a tackle. I don't see him as a guard, so I don't know that he's going to be the selection here. And it's a little too early to take a linebacker, in, in, in my opinion. I think Drew Sanders would be the top linebacker in consideration. Trent Simpson out of Clemson as well. Um, for me, though, I think I'm going to go best player available. And for me, that's edge rusher Nolan Smith. Uh, Smith is a very fast edge defender uh, from Georgia. Washington's strength has been on the defensive line, but because they're kind of sandwiched here between needs, between picks, I don't think that they're going to end up reaching. I think they'll just look at their board and go, okay, you know what? We're going to let this fall to us right now. We'll see where we can go later on in the second round. They've got a pick at 47, and I'm curious to see who can be the pick there. Uh, So we'll take edge rusher Nolan Smith out of Georgia, also coming back off an injury, but expected to fully recover and uh, and be a very, very good player. On Dane Brugler's board, he's the 11th best player in the entire draft. The commanders get him at 16. Yeah, I think, you know, if you're looking at best player available, it might be B. John Robinson, but... Um, that's true. You know, I I think that's a great pick. I think that uh, the Commanders are another team that just need help at so many places. So getting them another edge rusher to continue to build that pass rush. I know they've been trying to build that for, it seems like, five years now. They've been trying yeah. to really invest there, and it just hasn't worked out as well as they've hoped. So let's throw another body in there and see if that gets it to work. Well, and, you know, they had injuries at the edge rushers last year. Chase Young was hurt, missed most of the season. So I think adding to that that weapon is is a good move. Gracious, yep. how about that?